I think foundations have a very important role to play in the current context because of the pandemic and the aggravated inequality, because of the climate crisis, because of challenges with regard to democracy, society. Um, foundations which have the opportunity to be risk takers, innovators, bridge builders, investors, grant makers, really have a unique momentum to um, deploy their private resources strategically um, to change and to move uh, our, uh, our world and our societies into the right direction. And I think that um, because of the ability of foundations to be independent actors, and because of their ability to, th to think longer term, to operate also with very much agility, they do have a key role to play in the current context. How can they help us prepare for the future? Well, I think foundations um, have a very diverse toolbox that they can use um, in the current context to think about what the future will look like for societies. And one of the ways in which um, I believe it's most helpful for us to think is to involve the beneficiaries, to involve those who are affected by the current crisis into the thinking now and have that kind of cooperation and participatory inclusive approach towards thinking about what the future could look like and what we want the future to look like. What is institutional uh, philanthropy and what role does it play in meeting the critical challenges our societies face? So with institutional philanthropy, we refer to foundations, to corporate funders and to other institutions who deploy their private means strategically for social good. And I think they have an important role to play in achieving kind of a whole of society approach towards the crisis that we are facing and the challenges that society um, is, is grappling with today. And with just nine years ahead of the 2030 target, it's very important that foundations and institutional philanthropy in general has its opportunity to play um, in achieving the targets. Institutional philanthropy is part of the bigger philanthropic movement and what I find quite hopeful is to see how philanthropy has evolved over the past years but also increasingly in the context of the crisis. Philanthropy has really seen a uh, kind of a resurrection through the solidarity that has come from communities, from people, from citizens in the context of the crisis. How can European foundations help tackle economic inequalities and uh, develop policies for a more social Europe? Well, I think foundations and philanthropy um, has the ability to look at issues through an intersectional lens. And inequality is one of the lenses that philanthropy and foundations can use to address their problems. And unfortunately, with the crisis, with the pandemic, we see that inequality, among which economic inequality, but also other forms of inequality, has really aggravated. The crisis did go disproportionately after people who live in poverty, people with disability, young people, uh, the elderly, people of color, um, and that is really a problem that I think foundations are very aware of. And then in terms of developing policies, um, I think there is a European agenda that allows us to partner with the European Union. Um, the priorities of uh, President von der Leyen, uh, in, in it, to a great degree, really align with what foundations have on their agenda as well, and that kind of collaboration, that opportunity to co-invest, to co-grant and to think about what the policies are for the future that Europe needs um, is something that foundations uh, critically have to think about in their work today. Is it the duty of every foundation to bring the climate perspective to its portfolio? I believe that it is. Um, we've seen from the uh, latest report of the UN Intergovernmental Panel on climate change that if we do not act now it will be literally impossible to reach the 1.5 or even 2 uh, degrees Celsius by the end of this decade uh, and that would have dramatic consequences not only um, in Europe but also around the world. And I believe that in this context of an existential crisis, an existential crisis for humanity, foundations do have the opportunity and perhaps also the obligation to include the climate dimension in their work. It doesn't mean that you have to become a foundation that funds climate per se, but it means that you need to look 
at whatever your mission is, whatever your role is, through a climate perspective and see how, as a foundation, investing in arts, investing in democracies, investing in society, you can take that climate lens and that climate approach into your programming, into your thinking, into your operations, even into your investments. And I believe that if we don't act now, it might very well be too late for us. Thank you.